you know what, I'm going to just pray right now and we'll kick you all out. How about that? All right. Lord, thank you so much for. Um, thank you for the, the people that are here, Lord. Thank you for the people who chose to spend this morning and this moment with us, Lord. Um, what a privilege. What an honor to be um, to be in community, Lord. What a privilege. What an honor to get to share your word. What a privilege and an honor to be trusted with these young people that are in our. Um, pray that you would bless them. Pray that they would have um, great joy, great experience with their church. Um, pray that they, they would leave hearts fuller than they, they came with. Pray that for all of us. Um, pray that they would leave saying, man, I'd like to explore this Jesus and explore this church thing some more. I can't imagine life without it. Pray that that would be their experience. I pray for my wife. I love hearing about the conversations that she has with these with these youth. Love knowing that she engages them in such a re relatable way. Um, and so I just pray that you would bless the lessons that they learn today. Protect them. Keep them. Um, and uh, and again, Lord, as I say, bless our time richly in Jesus name. Amen. You guys have a great time doing what you do. Man, thank you guys for being here this morning. Just looking around at you guys and I'm I really am honored that you choose to spend um, Sunday with us, right? Like there's some pretty rad places that you could go and people you can be around and experiences that you could have on a Sunday morning. Um, but you choose to be here with us and so uh, I I just really respect and cherish that. Um, and I and I, I I also think that like man God is doing really God is doing really great stuff within this people group. And um, and that excites me for you. Um, that excites me for me. Um, this season of life for me, it feels familiar. I found myself saying that this, this week, that this season of life that I'm in, maybe the last, I don't know, the, the, just kind of six-ish months. I don't know. I don't know. Do I seem different to you guys at all? Feel different. It's just kind of been like throughout COVID and rolling out of COVID and just really snowballing into just a really fun season that feels familiar to me. Um, and uh, I'm going to tell you guys about that season here in a little bit that it feels familiar to a really special season of my life when I first moved out here. Um, so, so we will, we will get, we will get to that because um, what I want to talk to us about this morning is sacred songs, sacred songs. We're going to talk about the Psalms today. We've been going through our journey. We're going to talk about this idea of the of the Psalms, not the Psalms. The P is silent. We're going to talk about Psalms, and the Psalms are sacred songs. So before we get into these sacred songs and the sacred season of life that I've been in and am in currently, uh, I wanted to ask you guys, did anybody watch the Grammys last Sunday? Yeah? Yeah. So this may be some controversial... The, I'm not trying to start a barbershop debate here. I'm just going to tell you guys about my experience of watching the Grammys. Uh, there were some things that I was really excited about for the Grammys. I'm, I'm mostly, I haven't watched a Grammys or an award show like that in years. Um, it, it's almost like, it's like a guilty pleasure, right? It just kind of sucks, sucked me in. I really was watching uh, to, to support this guy, Toby Weegway. I was, he was up for, he was nominated for Best New Artist, and he did not win. Um, but he's a pretty, pretty cool guy, and he is a like Jesus loving, following guy, and very just a cool, cool dude. Um, I was wanting to be supportive of him, so that's part. That's that's the most reason like why I got engaged. But I started watching from the beginning, got in on some red carpet stuff, and it just sucked me in. And I spent like four hours. I thought it was like a couple hours, and the next thing I know, like the sun's going down. My kid is like, Dad, I thought we were going to jump on the trampoline or something today. And that's like, wow. 
I didn't finish my Sunday night energized. It, it was restful, and I was laying in bed watching the Grammys the whole day, but it really, like, grieved me. Now, there were components that were fun, right? Um, there, there was, you know, looking back on, like, the, the tribute of 50 years of hip-hop was cool, and I, I enjoyed that. But for the most part, man, like, I was really, like, really kind of weighed on me just because I've given so much of my life to pop culture, big part of who I am is influenced by hip-hop culture. And so I have a respect for it, but I also have a, a, a sadness for the state of superficiality in, in, our, in our culture. And I heard a lot of songs and a lot of music and a lot of honor given. I'm not saying the whole thing was trashy, but I saw a lot of honor and praise, really praise, like, like we just did to the Lord. That, that is a choice that we make, and like Rush so courageously like she does calls us out like, hey, you going to get really excited for the football game today? But like that's, right? So I see our culture giving a lot of praise and honor to some songs in an industry and, and a culture that just really isn't sacred. Like you could say some of it is flat out sack religious, right? Like really, like, and so for me personally, there was much of the Grammys that was like, oh, oh. And I'm not talking like I'm sitting there like, oh, these are these sinners. These these are terrible people. Like that's not what I'm talking about. For me personally, my soul was was grieved and not refreshed while watching most of it. Then my, my week rolled into Monday. And uh, you guys know I've talked to you recently about um, Proverbs eighteen sixteen says, a man's gift will make room for him and place him in the presence of great men, great people. So I went from watching a Grammy Sunday night late to Monday morning, I was placed in, a, in, a, um, in an environment of great people, and it lifted my spirit. And what lifted my spirit was that I, was, I found myself <clears throat> reflecting on a really special season of life. I was, I, I, you know, let's see, I went to a conference a month ago in Atlanta, and I'm like, man, Man, my, my God has just gifted me to be in the presence of these great people. Then I found myself invited to a, a preaching master class. And it was like some of the greats of our, of, I don't know, you guys know like Albert Tate. Does he do anything for you guys? You guys need to get out more, man. You guys don't know who Albert Tate is? Do you, do you guys bring your notebooks or a journal? Please, please take notes. Write down the name Albert Tate, okay? Uh, write down the name Carrie Newoff. Newhoff, I don't even know how you spell his name. It's just look it up. Carrie Newhoff. Um, look up the name Bishop Kenneth C. Ulmer. Does that do anything for anybody? Psh, Bishop, man. That so th this is part of why that this week was really special for me because I got to go be in the presence of Bishop Ulmer and at my old church. I'll get there in a second. Who else do you need to write down? Oh, Charlie Dates. Man, write down Charlie Dates. This guy was. And so I'm learning from some like these great preachers. And my biggest takeaway was, don't try to be them, just go be you, okay? Um, and the other takeaway was prayer. Charlie Dates is another one. Albert Tate, you got that. Um, there's a great lineup. You could just look up the preaching master class and, and, and write down. One, one more, Judah Smith. Anybody know Judah Smith? Does that do anything for you? That was the first time I've ever heard Judah Smith. That was a wild dude. That was a wild dude. I wasn't knowing. I was not knowing about Judah Smith. And really, really, I'm going to say fell in love with him. I've been judgmental towards Judah Smith because he's kind of like, the, he's, he's, he's Justin Bieber's pastor. Yeah, oh, that's who that is, right? But here's the thing, like, Justin Bieber... Trust this dude for spiritual, sh for shepherding. 
I was impressed. You know, and that's my thing too, like the Toby Weegways, the Judah Smith. Like there's people who are called to this industry, right? I have friends rush, like people are Jesus is called into the industry. So I'm not saying all these people are bad and terrible, but like God is moving. Okay, God is moving. So I got to be a part of um, this preaching master class this week, which was really special. But to be honest with you, when I first got invited, I'm like, eh, it sounds a little churchy for me. <laughs> Why do you laugh? It just sounded a little, sounded a little churchy, because you know how I am with like churchy. But yet I'm a part of the church. So I can't badmouth Jesus' bride. Like, that's, like, I am a preacher. I work at a church. I do this churchy thing on Sunday. And so that's the tension and the balance that I have. It's like, man, how do we keep this Jesus-centered and authentic? So I didn't really want to go at first. But then I found out it was not virtual. It was live because I'm, I, like, I, too, prefer the live thing, Okay. But I accept that community can happen and growth and, and sanctification can happen be, with a, between the chasm of a camera. I have grown spiritually because of virtual ministry. So I cannot deny that either. But I found out it was in person. Then I found out that, um, that it was at Faithful Central Bible Church. And I was like, oh, it's, that's my old church from a really special season of life 18 years ago. And I was like, all right. And then I asked, so, but are all these guys going to be there? Like all these great names plus more that I mentioned, like, are they all going to be there? Oh, I got some other names for you too. I'll tell you later. They're going to be there. So I'm like, wow. Well, I'm not that great yet. It would probably be a good idea for me to go learn from some of the greats. Right? And then my old pastor, Bishop, like, who's one of the greats? Like, all these other young bucks or youngish bucks are honoring him and his leadership. He just retired. I'm like, I get to go be around Bishop Ulmer. Yeah, this seems like another room that God's gifting me to be in the presence of great men. So I should probably go. Um, so where am I going with all this? 18 years ago, I made my first like leap of faith where I sensed like I'd known Jesus from a church context, like an American church context, sitting where you're sitting. I'd heard the gospel that, that Jesus had died for the sin that I have committed. I heard that at 14 at a Young Life camp, and I accepted that. And the weight of guilt and shame of all that I was hiding through my middle school years and going into high school was like, whew, just released. And I received this gift of grace and God's spirit in that moment of hearing the gospel. I was like, man, now I engage church differently. This means something different to me. But I went the rest of high school and college without Jesus ever really being like the Lord, the ruler of my life. And it wasn't until I graduated college that Jesus started reeling me in, and, and I made this decision to move out to California um, to be famous, and, but because I sensed that the Spirit was aligning and directing my steps to move to California. And when I visited California, I went to my brother Lloyd's church in L.A. They, had the, they owned the Great Western Forum at the time. Yo, I got baptized at the forum. I was baptized in the middle of the forum. And like they would set up the baptismal once, uh, once a month or once a quarter. They would set up a baptismal and do baptism classes. My, hey, mind you, can we just say that? Spirit, if there's somebody that it is on their heart to be baptized in our community, would you just press that? Would you press that on them? Would, would they be baptized? That's our, that's our mission, Lord. You gave it. Bat, make disciples, teaching them to obey all that I've commanded, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Would you, would you allow for us to be a part of that mission within our church community? Yeah, if, and if that is you, would you let me know? Would you let me know, please? 
so we can set that up, and you can have this story. Now, it's not the forum. It's not as cool, okay? But this is your community, and that's cool. What? Hey, Megan got baptized at CCC, and she said it was pretty cool. Amen. Amen. Very cool. Very cool. So, man, I got baptized at the forum, dude. Um, I, I, I visited my boy Lloyd's church, and I said, man, when I move out here, that's, that's going to be the church, you know, as long as I, like, you know, don't have to drive too far or whatever. And, like, that's, that's probably going to be my church. But the thing is, so Faithful Central is in Inglewood. Uh, they don't have the forum anymore. They sold that. They still utilize it sometimes. But, um, I, I mean, it's a black church. We're talking like several thousands of members, a lot of chocolate, not a lot of vanilla, okay? I was one of a handful most days. I don't know how it's looking now. But the thing is, and this is, this is where I want to start to get into some of the sacred um, storytelling is I've watched God move and compose the pieces of my life like a sacred song. And I've shared one of my favorite verses in the Psalms is Psalm 37, 23. And so this week to be to be taken, like transported back, and to go and visit on this campus in Inglewood, and to be in the presence of a guy who I respect and others, and and to see some, hug the some familiar faces of people that I shared a really sweet and special season of life with, to kind of be welcomed back home, to have people who haven't seen me in 17 years be like, hey, I'm, I'm Doc, I don't know if you remember. What? Doc, I remember when you gave your testimony in the middle of the forum on a Sunday morning, dude. Of course I remember you. I'm like, from 17 years ago? Yes. Like, it was really special. And so um, I, I, this, this week, I've just been recognizing just how special that season of life was. And it reminded me of this psalm that I, this verse in Psalms 37, 23 that I love. I've shared it with you before. It says, the steps of a man are established by the Lord, and he delights in his path, or he delights in his way. The steps of a man are established by the Lord, and he delights in his way. Now, this is poetic literature, so there's a few ways we can look at that, right? Like God orchestrates his steps. God is mindful and aware of the steps. God has predestined and written the steps. Um, I know there's some ways that I've lived my life that God probably didn't delight in, right? But when God watches the story of, of our life written, played out with different notes and different tones and different rhythms and different beats and the different sounds come together, it's really, it's really composed in divinity. It's really composed just magically. He composes the sacred songs of our life in miraculous ways. And so this week I, I was just reflecting as I was back at Faithful Central where it literally felt like I was walking on holy ground because like God had met me there. God introduced himself to me and in just fiery, amazing ways. And it was so great to reflect on these sacred moments. But then to come to realize, wow, God, you've been writing these sacred songs and sacred moments in my life. You still are writing these sacred symphonies within my life. And that's what the Psalms are, right? They're these sacred songs. They're sacred songs that are reflective of the processing of the writer's life journey. Some, some, some songs are written in the context of like, yo, this guy's about to be killed. Some songs are written in, in the context of great victory. Some songs are written in the context of the prayer closet where he's just trying to figure out life. Um, there's, it's the Psalms, there's 150 of them. 
written by several different authors, but, but the bulk of the Psalms were written by who? David. Now, here's my thing with David, man. David killed Goliath and cut his head off. David is a warrior. David slayed lions and bears, says the scriptures. David also played the harp. What? David also was a poet. See, for me, I never thought I was very tough. I've wa- I lived a lot of my life like wanting to prove that I was tough and that I don't have fears and weakness. So I wanted to be the war, the lion killing, lion slaying David. But I got this sensitive side to me. I am sensitive. I don't know if you guys knew about, about me, but I'm, I think I'm a pretty sensitive guy. Okay, I'm a pretty emotional guy. All right, you guys go with that. All right. um, and so David is this guy that is tough as nails and sensitive as, I don't know, give me something poetic to say with it. I'm not that poetic. Flower. Sensitive as a flower, but lovely. <laughs> Somebody else. <laughs> tough as nails, <laughs> sensitive as a flower. We'll go with flower. <laughs> No, I'm not going sensitive as a little girl either, Rich. We're not doing that. You guys get, sure, sure, whatever. He's sensitive, all right? He's tough and sensitive. He's this great balance, right? And as you read through uh, the, the, the Psalms, there's, there's a handful of different themes in there. And you see him wrestle with like very hard real life situations, but then also has this just gracious, sensitive heart. And he, he does such a good job of articulating the whole life journey that this thing is. The Psalms have helped me through, man, some tough seasons. Sometimes the Psalms help me articulate things that I can't articulate for myself. The Psalms are one of the few books of the Bible, like Proverbs, where you can just, because it's never a good idea to just be like, you know, I got to get my word. I got to start reading this thing. Boop. Okay, I'll pick there. Luke 4, 8, huh? And you start reading, you're like, I don't get it. I don't know. The Psalms are actually a place in the Bible that you can open up and just start reading. You'll probably get something from it. It's one of the few places that you can do that. It's, you should still figure out the context and stuff. You should still hone in on it. But there's several themes of the, of the, of the Psalms. Obviously, praising God is one theme. Thanking God is, is a theme. Um, God's Word being the, the guidance of God's word is a theme. Uh, finding strength in God is a theme of the Psalms. Oh, what else? Did I ever say giving thanks? Thank, thanks. Um, trusting God. Trusting God is a theme. So all these things that we need for this Jesus journey with life, we can find in these Psalms. And I love that... Uh, I love that I can look back over my life and find phrases in these sacred songs that articulate really well special moments of my sacred song that God is composing for me. Psalm 106, verse 4. Psalm 106, verse 4 says, Remember me, O Lord, in your favor toward your people. Visit me with your salvation. Remember me, O Lord in your favor toward your people. Visit me in your salvation. It's crazy. Right, right before I gave my life and accepted Jesus as my Savior in the ninth grade, I went through something called confirmation with my church in the eighth grade. Has anyone ever heard of that, confirmation? 
Yeah, I don't know. Like, I think it has something to do with like taking youth as they're growing into this kind of age of accountability and maturity and saying, hey, you're ready. You're, you're, you're an adult now. You're coming into adulthood. You need to be confirmed in your faith. So I don't know the whole history of this, but went through this confirmation class. And part of the confirmation class, and forgive me if some of the stories I share today you've already heard, but part of the confirmation class was that we would show up to church on Sunday like today, but then they would bus us as the youth, put us in a van or a bus and take us to a different church to experience other houses of worship. And so th- one particular Sunday we went to... Um, from, I lived in East Lansing. We went to Lansing to a black church. We walked in, and we, we sat in the back, kind of like some of you were sitting in the back. And we just we, we were there, and we were present, but we were also kind of observing, which is kind of weird, right? So picture this like black church with a whole bunch of white kids come in and sit down in the back. And I observed. And you know what I saw? I saw people smiling. In church, I'd never seen people smile in church, like that. I like, but like, oh, you guys are happy to be here. I'm, we always was like ready for the you know juice and the donuts, and then I'm I'm smiling when I get to lunch. You know, like I'm just kind of trying to hurry this process along. But these people were smiling and happy to be there, and they were singing this song called "He Will Remember Me." Anyone know that song? I tried to search it up on YouTube. Um, I think the song that they sang is a song called He Will Remember Me um, by Mahalia Jackson. Anybody know who Mahalia Jackson is? Yeah, yeah. That was, that was Martin Luther King Jr.'s favorite gospel singer, Mahalia Jackson. And so she sings this song, He Will Remember Me. But this, this specific rendition, I mean, this is eighth grade, and I remembered a song, guys. And... I sat in the back, and I, and I watched these people, and this lady up front kind of leading the song, just blowing the choir behind her, um, contributing and, and singing repeatedly, he'll remember me. And, and if you look on YouTube, you don't find any rendition that has the background ensemble, but I just remember that ringing in my head, he will remember me. And I, I sat in the back of that church, and I said, man... I wish we could come here every Sunday. This is cool. I like the music. I like the energy. I like the people. I like the smiles. This is great. And so I said, (laughs) I said, one day when I get to choose which church I'm going to, I'm going to a black church. So in college, my brother Lloyd started going to a Bible study led by a black pastor from a black church. And I went to this Bible study, man, this is pretty cool. And then we started going to church, and I was like, man, this is pretty cool. And then when I moved out here, I said, man, this is pretty cool. I'm going to be a part of this church. And so my first full day living in Los Angeles, I joined Faithful Central Bible Church. I had already accepted Jesus and knew him, but that was my first time like making a commitment of, all right, Jesus, I sent you leading me in my life. I'm going to commit to your daily authority and leadership in my life. And so when I look at that, remember me, O Lord, in your favor toward your people, visit me with your salvation. It wasn't long after I heard that he will remember me song that I heard the gospel at Young Life, and he visited me with my salvation. And then it was several years down the line, but God remembered my request for my style and my, my heart's desire, and he placed me in a really cool black church in Englewood, California. That season of life was magical. I met my first wife. I met some of my best friends in the world. Um, the, 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 the fire that I had, and that is still really burning just in different ways, don't necessarily always keep that euphoric, Um, uh, honeymoon season of life with Jesus. No, that doesn't always get gets real, right? Faith gets tested and it matures, but that season of life was so special. I watched God move and orchestrate my steps in so many ways that when when I went back this week, I thought, you know what? Watching God's Spirit move in my life today feels familiar, excuse me, 
feels familiar to that season of life. And I was reminded, like, man, God, you still are writing a sacred song in my life. Let's look at another. Um, Go to your right just a little bit. Psalm 136. Psalm 136. Verse 1. And it's fun to read the Psalms, too, because a lot of people write music based on these songs. So if you read Psalm 136, verse 1, Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his loving kindness is everlasting. Or some, ver- some translations say his mercy endures forever. Does anybody say that? Here it says that? And now there's a lot that got that song in there, Right? Or they got that, those, those words in there. Anybody think of songs that involve those words? Huh? Yeah, you got, you got a couple? You, you, wanna, you don't have to sing them. You wanna, you know? There's one that the choir, and I miss the choir, man, at Fable Central. You used to sing, his mercy endureth forever and ever, his mercy endureth. And they would just, and ever, and that was a good one. And the man, 50 person choir just getting into it. The song that comes to mind for me also is there was a uh, song by a guy named Israel, and I don't really still to this day know how to say his last name. Houghton? Horton? Houghton? You you guys know what I'm talking about. Israel. Houghton? Sure. (laughs) You You guys know what I'm talking about. He had this song back in the day, back in the day now, it's like 20 ish years ago. Lord you, Lord, you are good, and your mercy endureth forever. You guys know that song? Yeah, that's a good one. That's an oldie, but really good. The first time I heard that song, I was in college. I, I was in college. I heard that song. I went to a Friday night singles event at some church in Detroit with a buddy of mine from, from, from my football team. Him and his girlfriend, which is interesting because he went with his, but they weren't married yet. So we went to this singles. First time I heard about like sexual integrity, and it was like, wow, okay, this is interesting content. But it's also the first time I'd ever heard this song, Lord, you are good and your mercy endures forever. And I was moved, dude. And I remember being in the basement of this church in Detroit and like, man, this song is. And I'd seen people at the church lift their hands and worship before, but I had never done that. And it had been stirring in me. I was like, man, I wonder why they do that. It seems liberating. Like, what is that? And man, the, the Lord was stirring in my heart, man. And I was like, Lord, you are good and your mercy endure forever. And, I, and something was stirring inside me. I was like, yo, I think I, think I want to do it. I think I want to do it. I don't know what that is, Lord, but I think I want to do it. All right, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. <laughs> and I'm just, got my eyes closed. I do one of these like, does anybody see this? Do I look weird? I don't look weird. Who cares? I'm doing it. And I was so glad. I was worshiping with these alligator arms, these, this T-Rex worship, you know, and now you guys know me like, I'm just whatever. Like if I'm feeling it, I'm expressive in my worship. But I, that was the first time. And so I read through these Psalms and I have these sacred moments in my Jesus story that I'm reminded of as I read through these sacred songs that God has used in the sacred song in my life. Man, these, these words, man, these songs, these poems. I remember when my first wife passed away, man. I didn't know what to pray. I didn't know what to say. And I, and I don't kneel very often, but I remember kneeling to the side of my bed. <laughs> Jesus. 
just reading the words. Brooke asleep in her little toddler bed next to mine. And just reading the words. And letting those words just be prayers for me. Hey, Rush, would you mind coming up? And I'm going to invite you guys to spend a couple minutes <laughs> reflecting. Because you guys know, I like to share that Mark Batterson says that this study was done on people that had done centurions, that had, I think, it, centennials, that have people who have lived a hundred years and they reflect on their life and what was things that you would have done differently. And the common, one of the common themes of people who reflect on their life is, man, I wish I would have done this more. And so I just want to invite you guys to spend a few minutes in reflection. You can journal, you can open a psalm, you can look at some of those we already looked at. How, was, how, how do you recall Jesus showing up? How do you recall God showing up in ways that are unexplainable? To where you reflect and you say, man, you were there, God. I just want to invite you to revisit some of those, wow, God was there moments. And just reflect on those for a few minutes while Russia's playing.